Hi everyone. So today we are going to continue talking about sensitivity analysis with another example problem. So let me share my screen. Um, okay. Okay, so um, let's consider golf bag example. Um, I've got this uh, from one of the reference materials, Essentials of Business Analytics textbook. And I believe the, um, the problem description is a bit lengthy but uh, the formulating the LP model for this problem uh, would be really easy and, and very straightforward. So first, let me give you about five to 10 minutes. Um, why don't you pause the recordings and read through the problem description and uh, try to formulate an LP model and then come back, okay? Okay, so I assume that um, all of you come up with uh, the LP formulation for this example. So, um, you know, uh, in this example, the PAR uh, incorporation manufactures uh, standard and deluxe golf bags, right? And uh, the four different operations are uh, four different operations are required for each bag produced, right? So they are the um, uh, cutting and dyeing, um, and sewing, finishing, inspection, and packaging, right? With a time per golf bag. Um, As shown uh, in this table, right? Um, okay, and then um, the the plant manager um, provides you the estimations of the available uh, labor hours for the production of the golf bags, right? during the next uh, three months, next quarter. Um, and also we assume that the parse distributor uh, is convinced uh, everything that parse uh, makes uh, can be easily uh, sold uh, with the resulting profit of $10 per standard gold box, right? And also $9 for uh, deluxe golf bags. And uh, this company wishes to determine the number of each type golf bags uh, that will maximize the total profit, right? Okay, so um, Because the uh, primary uh, decision is uh, how many of each types of golf bags should be produced, right? So we define the decision variables. X1 stands for the number of uh, standard bags uh, pro produced next uh, quarter. And X2 is the number of deluxe golf bags produced next quarter, okay? And the complete LP formulation for this problem uh, would be like this. The objective uh, is to maximize the total profit and while satisfying the, um, how to say, the uh, time restriction uh, for each, this, for each uh, department, right? 
Excuse me. So, uh, for example, the first constraint um, ensures that the number of hours of cutting and dyeing uh, time used uh, must be less than or equal to the number of hours of cutting and dyeing time available, right? Uh, likewise, second constraint is for the sewing department, third constraint for finishing, and the fourth constraint, inspect and packaging department. Uh, similar way. Okay, so um, actually this is the input for the Lindo um, because, because Lindo cannot recognize this division symbol. So you have to calculate uh, everything by yourself and then type in uh, in the Lindo uh, model window, okay? But uh, for Lingo, you don't need to do that, right? Okay, and um, if you use Lindo or Lingo, um, and then they were gonna provide you the optimal solution right away, I believe. Um, and also additional information, the sensitivity analysis, uh, especially here for the ranges information can be obtained from both Lindo and Lingo. And also um, uh, you, can, you can get this final optimal table from uh, classic Lindo, not from the Lingo, okay? And we are going to use all of this information uh, for answering uh, these 11 different questions, okay? So let me um, split the window and then, uh, okay, let me open Microsoft Word. Okay. Mm, let me minimize this. Okay. And then Okay, should be good enough. Um, okay, so the first question, uh, if the profit on the standard gold bags were to decrease from $10 uh, each to seven dollars each. Then the um, what would be the effect on the number of standard gold bag uh, to be to be produced? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, it's really dry. Okay. So um, what Lindo output would you use? to answer uh, for this question. So the, um, okay, here, so the unit profit of the standard gold pack uh, has been decreased from here $10 to $7, right? Uh, so this value, oh, so, the, so this value has been changed to $7, right? So this change means a decrease 
of $3 in the objective coefficient uh, for variable x1, right? So we need to look at the um, allowable ranges for the objective coefficient, right? So in the um, window output, here are the objective coefficient ranges uh, for each variable uh, is the amount by which the objective coefficient can be changed, right? Uh, without causing a change in the current basis. So um, let's look at the okay, objective coefficient ranges. So according to our Lindo uh, report, uh, the allowable decrease limit of the variable x1 is 3.7, right? Yeah. And the $3 of decrease is within the allowable decrease limit, right? which means that the current basis will not be changed. So, okay, so here, how'd you answer? If the profit on the standard bet were to decrease from $10 to $7, then the number of standard bags to be produced would remain the same, okay? Okay, then how about question number two? If the profit on the deluxe gold bags were decreased from $9 to $15, then what would be the effect on the number of deluxe gold bags to be produced? Is that increase or decrease or remains the same? or you don't have enough information to answer for this. So let's find out. First, what information Lindo output you'd like to look at? Again, it's very similar to the first question, right? About the same question, I believe. So definitely you're gonna look for the allowable ranges for the objective coefficients, right? So the unit profit of the deluxe gold bag has been changed from nine to 15, which is an increase of $6 in the objective coefficient for variable number two, X2, right? Variable X2. So we need to look at this, right? This value. So according to this Lindo output, the allowable increase limit of X2 variable is 5.2857. And the $6 of increase goes beyond the allowable increase limit, right? In the objective coefficient ranges, which means that the current basis will change. Okay, and it seems uh, very clear that the basis change would result in an increase in the total production, right? So, how'd you answer? That's gonna be increase. Okay. What is the answer for the first question? It remained the same, right? Okay, the next question. Question number three. If an additional 
10 hours were available in the inspect and packing department. What happened to the uh, profit then? So the plant manager knows that 135 hours are available, right? Yeah. For the inspection and packing during the next quarter. So the constraint, the last constraint appears in the fifth row in the Lindo Lingo output is concerning the time constraint for the inspection and package, right? Inspection and packing. So, um, sorry, what was the question again? Okay. So what happened to the objective function value if an additional 10 hours were available? If the right-hand side value is increased by 10 hours, right? In other words. So what window output you do look for? Dual price, right? Do you remember? Dual price indicates the uh, improvement in the objective function value resulting from a unit increase of the right-hand side value of the associated constraints, right? However, um, if you remember, I told you this multiple times, the dual price only remains valid within the allowable right-hand side ranges, right? So if you want to use the dual price, always you need to check the allowable ranges of the corresponding right-hand side values first. Okay, so um, if you look at the right-hand side ranges here, so you are looking for this value, right? So increasing the 10 hours for inspection and packaging, um, uh, inspection and packing, is uh, within the allowable increase limit of infinity, right? So the current dual price for this row number five is still valid, right? So if you look at the dual price right here, we're going to use this dual price value. And here the dual price is zero. And the 10 hours increase is within the allowable increase limit in the right hand side, in the right hand side ranges, right? So how do you answer for this question then? So if we go back to the other uh, question, if an additional 10 hours were available in the inspect and packing department, the company would be able to obtain an additional zero dollars in profit, right? So the profit would remain the same. Make sense? Okay, then uh, how'd you answer for question number four? If an additional 10 hours were available, the cut and die department, what happened to the profit then? Okay, so those questions are very similar to uh, each other. Um, so if you look at the formulation, LP formulation here. 
So we know that 630 hours are available for cut and dye department, right? During the next quarter. So obviously here, we can say that uh, the first constraint, which appears in the second row in the Lindo Lingo output, represents the time constraint for the cut and dye department. So what happened to the objective function value if the right-hand side value is increased by 10 hours? Of course, we are going to look at the dual price, right? And also look at the corresponding right-hand side value, uh, the all our ranges, right? So if you look at the right-hand side ranges, here, this is the allowable increase limit, right? So increasing the 10 hours of um, hours is here within the allowable increase limit. Is that right? So, which means that uh, we should be able to use the dual price for that constraint. So, the dual price is 4.375. That's the $4.38 approximately per hour, right? So um, we can say that if an additional 10 hours were available in the current dye department, the company will have an additional $43.75 in the profit, okay? So number four, have have an additional forty three dollars and seventy five cents. In profit, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. Uh, next question. So question number five. So the next question is, um, which of the following is, which of the following is equivalent to increasing the variable slack two. So we need to consider uh, the first constraint, right? That appears in the second row in the Lindo Lingo output. Um, that's for the cut and die department. So this constraint, if I rewrite down here, 0.7 x1 plus x2, right? It's less than equals 630, right? And this inequality constraint um, can be converted to equality constraint if I introduce slack variable, right? So 0.7 x1 plus x2. Here I add slack 2, right? Then we're going to have equal sign. 
So the question says, uh, okay, let me go back. Okay, so um, select two is the unused hours in the current die department, right? And if select two were increased by theta, for example, okay? So, um, Then we're gonna add theta here, right? And of course, if I move theta to the right hand side, it's gonna be 0.7 x1 plus x2 plus slack two equals 630 minus theta. Is that right? So we can say that if the variable select two, which is the unused hours for the current die department. So if, this, if the variable select two were increased like this, okay? This would be equivalent to the decreasing the hour used in the current die department. Is that right? So the first option is correct, right? Okay, then let's move on to the next question. Question number six. So if the variable select two were increased by 10, what would be the effect on the production of standard gold back per quarter? So what information would you like to look at to answer for this question? How about this? Substitution, substitution rates. So here substitution rate alpha sub ij is if one of the non-basic variable, in this case, xj increase, then how much one of the basic variable xi will decrease, okay? this much. Now, of course, if alpha sub ij has the negative value, that means an increase in this basic variable as xj increases, right? Okay, so um, if we look at the final optimal table. And especially we need to look at select two column, right? For X1 variable. So we need to look at this value, okay? So this means that as select two increases by one unit, then the basic variable x1 will decrease by this much. But because we have negative sign there, so x1 variable will increase by 1.25, is that right? So as slack two increases 
10. Then the basic variable x1 increase 10 times, right? This much, 1.25. So x1 increases by 12.5, okay? So this is the standard gold back, right? Uh, so this is number six. If the variable select two or increased by 10, then the X1, which is the production of the standard gold back would increase by 12.5 each quarter, okay? Uh, okay, then next question number seven. If the variable uh, slack two were increased by 10 again, what will be the effect on the production of gold back, deluxe gold back uh, per quarter? So um, again, we are going to look for the uh, substitution rate here, right? And this time we need to look at this value corresponds to the basic variable X2, right? That's the deluxe score back, right? So um, we can say as slack to increase one, the basic variable X2 decreases. 1.875, right? So as slack two increases 10, then the basic variable X2 will decrease 10 times of this. So it's gonna be 18.75 bucks per quarter, right? Is, is that right? Okay. And how about number eight? If the profit on the standard gold backs were to decrease from ten ten dollars uh, to six dollars, what will be the effect on the number of standard gold backs to be produced? So we've done this um, very similar questions, right, earlier. Um, so the unit profit, unit profit of the standard uh, gold bags has been decreased from 10 to $6, right? So we need to look at the um, objective coefficient ranges, right? So the uh, decrease of $4 in the objective coefficient for variable number one, right? Uh, so the X variable, X, X1 variable. Um, and the allowable decrease limit for X1 variable is 3.7, right? And $4 of decrease goes beyond this allowable decrease limit, right? Which means that the current basis will change, okay?
So if the profit on standard gold band were to decrease from $10 to $6, the number of standard bags to be produced would decrease definitely. Okay, and how about number nine? If the profit on the uh, deluxe golf bags were to increase from nine to 13, what will be the effect on the number of deluxe bags to be produced? Again, uh, very similar questions, right? Again, we are going to look for the um, objective coefficient ranges, right? So according to this Lindo output, the allowable increase limit, sorry, the allowable increase limit of the X2 variable is 5.2857. And the $4 of increase is within the allowable decrease limit, right? Which means the basis will not be changed. The basis, the current basis will remain the same, okay? So number nine, the number of deluxe gold bags to be produced would remain the same. Okay. Remain the same. Okay. Okay, now move on to question number 10. So if an additional 10 hours were available in the sewing department, what would be the uh, company's profit? So if you look at the, uh, our formulation, LP formulation, um, so originally, you know, 600 hours available for the sewing department, right? During the next quarter. And so what happened to the objective function value? If the right-hand side value for this constraint is increased by 10 hours, okay? So obviously we need to look at the dual price, but first of all, we need to check the right-hand side, the ranges, right? Um, so here we have right-hand side uh, ranges, allowable ranges, right? And we are looking at this value, okay? So increasing the 10 hours for sewing department, is there within this lower increase limit, right? Of infinity. So we can use the current dual price for this row number three. Uh, how much was that? So dual price for row number three is zero. Okay. So, Number 10, if an additional 10 hours were available in the sewing department, the profit would remain the same, right? Because you're gonna get, obtain an additional $0 in the profit which means the profit just remains the same. Okay, so this is gonna be our last question for today.
if an additional 10 hours were available in finishing department, what, what would be the company's profit? So um, if you look at the LP formulation, uh, we know, know that 708 hours are currently available for the finishing department, right? So what if the right-hand side value here, 708 is increased by 10 hours? What's gonna happen to the objective function value? Like we did uh, in the previous question, question number 10, we need to use the dual price, right? So first we need to check it, uh, the right-hand side value. I mean, the allowable ranges for the right-hand side values, right? So we are looking at this value, right? Um, all right, wait, wait a second, let me go back. Sorry, um, you have to look at this value, right? 192, additional 10 hours. So we need to look at the allowable increase limit for the corresponding um, constraint number four, right? So um, increasing the 10 hours of finishing department is still uh, within the allowable increase limit of 192 hours. So the current dual price for row number four has still valued, right? So here, we can use this value, right? Which means the objective function value will increase by this much per additional hours of finishing department, right? So profit, would increase. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay, then I will stop here. Uh, for today. And next time, um, I will give you another examples for the sensitivity analysis. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye bye.